Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Berlakis presenting case 180 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating some of the difficulties involved in treating coronary bifurcations. The patient was an elderly gentleman who presented with inferior ST elevation myocardial infarction. The culprit lesion was successfully stented. However, treatment of an LAD lesion was unsuccessful due to inability to wire the lesion, which was likely complicated by dissection, and the patient was referred for stage PCI of the LAD as well as the left main. This is the coronary angiogram. There is a severe disease in the middle LAD and also at the bifurcation with uh, a diagonal branch. And this appears to be hazy. This is uh, the area where the, where the previous wiring was unsuccessful. There is also disease uh, into the osteal ramus branch, some disease in the distal left main, and there is heavy calcification. So our plan was to start by treating the LAD. We advanced the workhorse wire in the diagonal, and then we plan to do wiring using the reversed guide wire technique. We used a dual lumen microcatheter. However, instead of the knuckle going in the diagonal as we had planned to, the knuckle kept on entering into the LAD. So we ended up advancing it, and this is essentially is more of a star technique. And then uh, we switched the Sion black wire that was intended to be used for the reverse wire technique for a workhorse guide wire in the LAD. What is apparent in the LAD is that it looks very hazy, so there's likely an area of dissection. We might have propagated it, it might have been there from before, but again, the area of the mid LAD where the diagonal comes off seems to be hazy and dissected. So the next step is to understand the anatomy better. We did uh, intravascular ultrasound, and that shows that distally we're into the true lumen. But as we're coming back, it looks like we're in the extra plug space and more proximal, things look okay. We tried to predilate the diagonal, but this was not possible, likely because of the severe calcification. So we did intravascular lithotripsy. We had to use a guide extension to deliver the lithotripsy catheter to the diagonal. And then after... Uh, giving uh, the several pulses of intravascular lithotripsy, we were able to expand the diagonal lesion. And then we decided to use the, to stand the LAD using a two-stand technique because of the areas of dissection. And the best way to do this is to use the DK crust technique because we maintain wire position into the main vessel throughout the procedure. So we standed the diagonal, then we crushed the part of the diagonal stand protruding into the LAD. We rewired the diagonal branch, and then did the first kissing balloon inflation. And then we placed the stand into the LAD, jailing the diagonal branch. We did the proximal optimization technique. We had some uh, difficulty with rewiring, but eventually was successful. We also had some difficulty delivering equipment into the diagonal, but then by using the distal anchor technique, Actually, the side branch anchor technique, this is a balloon inflated into the LAD, were then able to advance equipment inside the diagonal branch and complete the second kissing balloon inflation. We then turned uh, our attention to the distal left main. There is disease into the proximal circumflex. There is disease uh, into the proximal LAD. We wired all those branches. We did uh, predilatation, and then uh, we decided to stent uh, again using DK crush. One stent went into the first obtuse marginal on the circumflex, and the other stent went into the LAD, overlapped with the previous stent. Um, then after doing this, we did have unfortunate loss of flow into the more distal circumflex, but fortunately we were able to wire it with a workhorse guide wire, perform balloon angioplasty, and restore the great flow into that vessel. And this was the final result. Essentially, two DK crushes were done, one in the middle LED diagonal, the other in distal left main. Nice result. We have Timothy flow the diagonal, Timothy flow into the circumflex and the LED. And intravascular ultrasound was done, showing that the stand was uh, well expanded and um, well opposed to the wall of the vessel. So overall satisfactory result. This is the left main, all the guide wires, and the patient uh, did fairly well. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, sometimes what we intend to do may not be what actually happens. Our initial plan was to use the reverse guide wire technique to wire the LAD that could not be wired before. Uh, 
Instead, what happened is the knuckled polymer jacket it's seen on black wire ended up going down the LED. And we advanced it. It uh, went to the true lumen. It likely dissected and then spontaneously re-entered, which is a form of star. But then what we had to do to minimize uh, um, the risk of losing the side brands is to use a two-stand technique, which in our case was DK crash. The DK crash helped us maintain uh, flow into both vessels and uh, maintain the wire position in the main vessel throughout the standing. Imaging was critical to understand the dissections, the vessel anatomy, and choose our stands. The diagonal was undilatable with a balloon and was treated successfully using intravascular lithotripsy. And then, as we mentioned before, both for the left main circoflex and especially for the LED diagonal, using a two-stand bifurcation strategy was critical for maintaining patency of both vessels. Thank you.